Hello again, my name's John, I'm a retired chef from the northeast of England in the UK and welcome to my latest video. And in this one I'll be making one of our local dishes called Penacleti. It's very well known in the northeast area of the UK, especially my hometown of Sunderland. Now every family seems to have their own particular recipe and this is ours. It's a very tasty dish and very simple to make and I hope you enjoy it too. You can view the ingredients list and full written method for this recipe on the recipe page on the channel's website. I'll leave a link in the description under the video or you can click on the eye icon top right of the screen to take you directly to the recipe page. Before I go any further, I'd like to give a quick shout out to this week's Patreon and PayPal donators. And they are Kevin Johnson, Don Stewart, Nick Hillier, Ronald Bell, Jürgen Erbas, Janine McQueen, Harold Edmondson, Paul Pecilengro, Michael Kopchik Jr., Diddy Phillips, Annette Ryder, Lena Francisco, and finally Meg. Thanks again guys, I really do appreciate all your support. And with that out of the way, let's get on with today's recipe. I'll start the recipe by frying off the sausages. This is just to get rid of most of the fat and they're easier to slice once cooked. I'm using pork sausages in mine, but you can use whatever meat you prefer. Another variation on this recipe is to use bacon. Right, that's those done. Now I'll get them on some kitchen paper and set them aside to cool. And the next job is to wash, peel and slice the potatoes. I always try to use the Morris Piper variety for mine. If you're not sure which to use, choose a potato that's good for roasting. Try to keep them all the same thickness, about 6mm, that's a quarter of an inch. Any thicker than that, they will take longer to cook. Sliced carrots is also acceptable in this dish. Time to prepare the onion. For this recipe, you'll need about a medium sized onion. Sliced or diced, it's entirely up to you. I prefer a bit of both. This onion's a bit too big, so I'll just use half of it. Right, that's the vegetables out the way, time to slice up the large tin of corned beef. Slice this about the same thickness as the potatoes. Slice the cooked sausages the same thickness too, and they look much better if you cut them on an angle, as shown. Right, that's everything sliced, time to make the gravy. In a saucepan, on a medium to high heat, pour in the can of chopped tomatoes. Now add the beef stock. If you've got proper beef stock, all the better. I don't have any, but I'm using three of these well-known beef stock cubes, dissolved in a half pint of boiling water. While that's heating up, I'll mix up the thickening agent, which in this case is 12 grams, that's 3 teaspoons of corn flour, you may know that as corn starch, and adding it to 3 tablespoons, that's 45 mils of cold water. Once the gravy starts to simmer, stir in the thickener and bring it back to a boil. Now 
And that's the gravy made, and now it's time to put this dish together. Before assembling the recipe, preheat your oven to 190 degrees Celsius, that's 375 Fahrenheit or gas mark 5. I'm setting mine to 170 because my oven is fan assisted and it runs about 20 degrees hotter than indicated on the dial. The dimensions of the baking tin I'll be using are on screen. Now this dish is built up in layers, but it's entirely up to you which order you do it in. It's self-explanatory, so I'll let you watch while I build mine up. Just make sure you keep adding a couple of ladles of gravy here and there. And I always like to finish off with a layer of potatoes and gravy on top. Once everything is in, cover the dish with kitchen foil and tightly seal around the edges. If you have a casserole dish with a good fitting lid, all the better. There's no need for the foil. Now I'll get that into the preheated oven and set the timer for 1 hour 20 minutes. As I know by experience, that's how long this particular variety of potato takes to cook. I've known some varieties take anywhere between one to one and a half hours. The best thing to do is to set your timer the same as mine and check the potatoes with a fork to make sure they're done. If yours are still a little hard, reseal the dish and put it back into the oven for an extra 15 minutes. Then check it again. Within reason, you can't really overcook this dish. And in mine goes for 1 hour 20 minutes. And while that's cooking, I hope you don't mind if I give my very first recipe book a bit of a plug. The book has lots of our favourite recipes from our work kitchens in it, and is available in the channel's website shop, along with loads of other equipment I use in the videos. It's just another way you can support the channel. I leave a link in the description box below the video or just click on the eye icon top right of your screen if you want to order a copy today. Okay mine's done so I'll get it out of the oven and onto the board and serve myself up a portion while it's still piping hot. Ah, 
I've checked the potatoes and mine's done. But like I said, if yours are still a little under, reseal and get it back into the oven. It's a good idea to make a note of the variety of potato and the time it takes to complete, so you won't be guessing next time you make it, as I'm pretty sure you will, once you taste it. And this is how we would normally serve it. Just this on its own, in a bowl, piping hot, with a big thick slice of crusty bread and butter. And just as I knew, it's absolutely delicious. When we were kids back in the 50s and 60s, we grew up on this kind of food because it was cheap, filling and easy to make. And it's still a very popular dish in my little corner of the world today, and hopefully yours too now. It even has its own page on Wikipedia, and that, as usual, gets a big thumbs up from me. And once again, please consider supporting my Patreon appeal for as little as $2 per month. Or, if you prefer, you can make a one-off small donation using my PayPal page. It really does go a long way towards ingredients and production costs, as every penny pledged goes back into my videos. And whether you've donated or not, thanks again for your wonderful support in watching the channel. Well, thank you again for watching. Please like, share, comment and subscribe by hitting the circle above. If you do subscribe, activate the bell icon next to the subscribe button on my channel page. And by doing that, you'll be automatically notified every time I upload a new video. And in the meantime, here's a few of my other videos and playlists that you may want to watch. So, until the next time, be safe in your kitchen and bye for now.